back to another video. So today's video was actually recommended. I saw it in the comments and I thought it was a great idea so we are going to try it out today. And this video is actually going to be how to make your own DIY crab attack. So my attempt today is going to be to build a crab attack out of mainly things I already have. Yes, you will need to go to the store and buy a couple of things, but the majority of this should be stuff that you can already find just looking around your house. At some point, I do want to make a video that is like the cheapest real crab attack that you can make. In that video, I will go over the more specific like prices of the different items, but for this video, it's just going to be things that I found in my house and I'm going to put it all together and somehow make it a crab attack. So let's just jump right into this and see how it goes. All right, so to start off with, I have a clear container with a lid. This is something that the majority of people keep in their house for storage. So almost everyone should have this. You are going to want a clear one just because it lets you see the hermit crabs and also it will let them have light go into the crab habitat and that way they can have a natural day and night cycle, which they do need. So this container is 56 quarts. I'm not sure exactly what that converts into gallons, but I will look it up and I will put it up on the screen. So you want to have a minimum of five to 10 gallons per hermit crab. So most people, I get a lot of comments saying that you need to have 10 gallons per crab all the time. I don't really think that's the case. I think it depends on the size of the crab. So for me, I think five gallons is okay for smaller crabs. And once they get about probably golf ball size is when I think they need to move up to 10 gallons per crab. And then as they continue to get larger, you're gonna wanna give them at least that 10 gallon minimum. So the same thing applies when you are using a container, you still need the proper amount of gallons. So we have my plastic container here and then my lid. You will want a lid just because it helps to keep in the humidity and it will prevent escapes. So next, you're going to want to drill holes in the lid. Here we go. Okay, so I'm not actually going to do it because I'm not actually making this a crab attack and I do want to use this container for other things, but you would want to put holes in it to allow airflow. I would recommend starting with just a couple of holes and seeing if you have to add more as you go. My concern would be if you put in a lot of holes, then it's not going to keep in the humidity as well. Because remember, hermit crabs do need lots and lots of humidity. So I would start with maybe just a couple on one side and see if that is enough to create enough airflow, but still keep the humidity up. All right, so we got the container. We're gonna pretend that we put holes in the lid. Now it's time to add our substrate. All right, all right. So I got my all natural play sand and I get a lot and a lot and a lot of comments saying that play sand will kill your hermit crabs. It will not. This is all natural. It is safe for them. In the wild, hermit crabs live on sand. Sand does not kill them. The man-made types of sand, like hermit crab sand and calcium sand and those ones that are processed in a factory, yes, those are not safe. Yes, those can kill your crabs. But when it's all natural, it comes from the beach, it comes from the earth where hermit crabs live in the wild, this is safe, it will not kill your crabs. Anyway, you can use either play sand or eco earth or I recommend watching my videos all about hermit crab substrate. I have two of them and you can learn more about substrate there. We are going to put this substrate into our container. Again, you're going to want to give it lots of depth, a good, good amount for your crabs to be able to molt. Got to use those muscles. And we will just smooth it out. So as far as where to get play sand, you can buy it for only a couple of dollars. And 
and you can collect sand from the beach in certain areas. You will have to look into the laws in your area, but in some areas it is legal to collect beach sand and you could get it that way. If you do get it from the beach, I would recommend baking it in your oven to sterilize it and kill any bacteria or bugs. All right, so the next thing I'm going to add in is my water dishes. You're going to need one for your fresh water and your salt water. I'll talk more about that later, but you do want to have these deep enough that the crab can fully submerge. Most people have these types of little containers in their house. Then you're also going to want a food bowl, and this could really be anything. It could be a smaller bowl, it could be a lid for a container. This could really just be anything to keep the hermit crab's food on, so we're gonna put that right there. Next thing I'm going to add is hiding places. Having a hiding place is super important for hermit crabs. It's a great way for them to relax and de-stress. It gives them a place where they can just sleep and be calm. So it's something that you want to give to all of your crabs. Two ways that you can do this would be to add in a pot. Most people have some type of gardening pot. This one is painted and I would not recommend a painted one. If you were actually to use this in a crab attack, you would want it to probably just be a plain terracotta one. But this is the only example that I have right now. So I'm just going to kind of put that in the tank like that and then I also have a jar and I've talked in previous videos about jar caves my crabs seem to love them and so I'm gonna add in a jar here so I fill the inside with some sand and then let's see we'll actually dig this out and now inside of there is a nice dark area. All right, so at this point, we've added in our water, our food, our hiding places. Now we are going to add in something for the crabs to climb on. Again, climbing is another area that's super important for crabs in the wild. They climb all day long. And in captivity, if you give them the opportunity, they will climb all day long. So what I'm going to use for climbing in this tank I have some fake flowers. Most people have this in their house just as decorations. So we're gonna add these in over here. And remember, this tank is just using stuff that you already have in your house. It's not really for the appearance of looking super nice. Um, you could go out and spend money and make it look nicer. But for right now, this is just using what we have. Most people also have some sort of string, twine, netting, something along those lines that you can use to add in and give your crabs more climbing opportunities. You could also use wood if you have any wood for decorating in your house, although you do want to make sure that it is a kind that is safe for hermit crabs. And I will link down below somewhere where you can look at the different types of woods and if they're hermit crabs safe or not. So I'm going to add in some of this wood and add in some of the netting. Now I have added in all of the climbing stuff so you can see we have our plants. I also added in some of our wood and our netting. I added in the netting to the pools because you do want a way for the crabs to climb out of the pools that way they don't drown. Um, this probably wouldn't work long term just because I think the netting would get moldy, but I put it in there just for an example. You would want to find something else, maybe some of these fake plants to put in there and let them be able to climb out. But for now, this is what we've got. So at this point, I've added in everything that I can to the Crabitat that is probably stuff I have around my house. However, there is a couple things that you will need to buy in order to make a Crabitat work. So now we're going to look at what those items are. Firstly, you will need an under tank heater. The brand that I recommend is Ultratherm. I think that Ultratherm is the best in the business as far as price and actually working. And the best thing about Ultratherms is that they can come off of the tank. A lot of the other brands, like Zoomed, you stick it on the tank and then it only works for that one tank. You can't take it off. 
Ultratherms are great because you tape them onto the side of the tank and you can take them off and reuse them whenever. So I think Ultratherms are the way to go. Secondly, you will need a thermostat and a hydrometer. The best one that I have found is these Accurite ones and this has both the temperature and the humidity on it so I think it's great. It's a two-in-one. They're not that expensive and you can find them at like Walmart, Home Depot, there's a couple of different stores. Third, you will need to buy salt water so you cannot just use table salt or any other type of you know sea salt or whatever for your hermit crabs, that stuff is not safe for them and it's not natural. The most common brand that is found that is safe for hermit crabs is Instant Ocean. And this can be a little bit pricey. Uh, I think this was about $10 and this will last me a couple of months. But it is something that your crabs will definitely need. So yeah, this is definitely one that you will have to buy, but it is worth it. And lastly, shells. Unless you are lucky enough, like me, to live near the beach where you could maybe find them, you're going to need to buy shells. And actually, one of my latest videos is all about shells, and in that video, the description links where you can find these for the best prices, so definitely check that out. The pet stores often do not have the right kind, and they are expensive, so I would definitely check out those links and see where you can find some better, cheaper shells. So that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure that you leave a like and make sure that you are subscribed to see all my other hermits, hounds, horses, and gecko related videos. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!